Hi, Jeff Love here from Alternative Heating and Supplies. I get a lot of questions about what pumps to use, how to install them, and how to fix them if anything's going wrong. So I'm going to break this video down into three chapters. The first chapter is going to be about installing the pump, all the things that need to, you need to consider when installing a pump. Chapter two is going to be what pump to use and how to size your pump for your application. And chapter three is going to be repairing a seized pump. Okay, chapter one, installing a pump on the back of a wood boiler. It's really a couple simple things to consider. When installing the port, you want to install a pump, which is identified here in this green circle, uh, at the lowest port. And the reason why you want to install it at the lowest port, these pumps were designed to be have an equal pressure on the back side of the pump as well as the front side of the pump. Since these boilers are mainly open to the atmosphere, that means there's no pressure on the back side. We can't pressurize the unit or pressurize the loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to use all this water with the weight of the atmospheric pressure of that water to pressurize the back side of that boiler because the front side the pump is generating the pressure for. So that's the reason we want this mounted on the bottom port so we have all that water weight on that atmospheric pressure on the back side of the boiler to try to balance it out as best we can. The water circulation is also a very vital important part of the outdoor wood boilers. The water jacket is around the outside, um, around the firebox. Firebox identified in here and this is a barrel and barrel design is what it's called. What you're going to do here is if you're pulling off the bottom, the water is going to, you're going to be returning the water at the highest port. What that's going to do is that's going to get a cross heat exchange from the barrel to the water. So the water's flowing down and inside the chamber the water's heating up. So you're going to get a cross a circulation and transfer the heat. At the same time, if you didn't do it that way, you would have the heat of the chamber at the hottest part and the water at the hottest part, and then you'd be pulling up top where this water would be, wouldn't be circulating very well. It's very, very important to get a good circulation around your wood boiler, no matter what brand or kind you have, to make sure that all the water in the jacket are uh, it, you know, an equal temperature as close as you can get it. To give you that BTU factor and that um, when you need that big burst of energy, that if some of the water is not up to temperature and some of it is, it's not going to do you much good when you really need it when it's cold. On the back of the boiler is where you want to install the, the pump. A lot of people ask, well, can I put it inside? Sure you can, but when you usually mount a pump to a wall that is mounted in your house or to a ceiling or something, it's usually mounted to the framing of the house or whatever and that pump vibrates and makes motion and I've heard numerous times that you get the the uh, vibration and the sound running through the house and it usually doesn't bother the men but it drives the women crazy uh, and that's what uh, I hear a lot of complaints about that's why I also don't like it on inside the house the other reason that I like it on the back side of the boiler is these pumps are all air cooled as you can see by the fins so it's better to keep the pump cool which is outside by the boiler for efficiency reasons as well now on the I carry an install kit that mounts to the back of the boiler. And the reason I like the install kit and things that you can take into consideration, and you don't have to buy my install kit, but if you'd like to, you can. But the reason for the install kit is that on the uh, supply side, which is the hot water going to the house, I mount a, um, the pump. And then on the return side, I mount a, uh, a ball valve with a boiler drain so I can actually bleed the loop of, of the loop of any air that's in it. Uh, because what you're going to have here is you're trying to have this pump pushing back into um, the water jacket where there's water and the air can't push through the water because the pump's not strong enough because air compresses and the pump will compress it. So in this case you're able to open the ball valve, open the boiler drain, bleed the air out and you now primed your, uh, your loop and that's the reason you should do that. Take that into consideration too. Also, a lot of people uh, will call me and say, hey, um, I'm not getting any heat to the house. Well, I ask them, is there a pump working? And the pump will be vibrating and moving. It doesn't mean the cartridge inside is spinning or circulating the water. But what, again, with that boiler drain uh, and that ball valve, you're able to close that ball valve, open the boiler drain, and the water is coming out rampant fast and powerful. You know the pump's working. If it's not, it's trickling out like a, 
like a slow leak, you know the pump's not working. Another way to test the pump, that's why these, these kits that I make are, are designed for many different facets to help you figure out and troubleshoot any problems you might have. Um, sizing the pump is also a very critical situation. I'm going to be talking about that in chapter two. And also the type of pump uh, to choose for your application. Again, there's so many different kinds of pumps, and I'll go through that in chapter two. Thank you for watching chapter one. Check out chapter two, and three will be coming up shortly after. Please give me a thumbs up. Let me know how I'm doing. Any suggestions, uh, videos that you would like to see, and we'll talk to you soon.